Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay, in the last class we have discussed about uh, the single cell protein and we already said very clearly, okay, by using uh, microorganisms which are rich in proteins. So that means we are not, okay, they are not only rich in proteins, but they are also rich in, uh, okay, certain components like uh, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals also. Okay, but they are more rich in uh, vitamins, okay, more rich in proteins. So, such microorganisms we are selecting and those are grown by using certain uh, materials which are produced from a, uh, okay, produced from a uh, certain uh, waste materials that are produced from the different uh, food processing units and by using and uh, animal manure and all the okay and sewage water also okay and we are uh, okay by this we are reducing the waste materials that are generated by the human activities so so this okay and uh, we are able to get a huge amount of protein content within a short period of time we are able to get 25 tons by using 250 grams of uh, microorganism and by using the waste materials on which these microorganisms are growing and uh, we are able to get a 25 tons of uh, protein okay 25 tons of uh, protein that is the importance of this uh, single cell protein okay that is and uh, these are used as a food supplements by you okay large number of people by the athletes by the astronauts because okay they are they are easy to carry to any place like okay there is no need of carrying the total plant or total animal here simply that protein component alone we can carry to any place so and next okay that is about a single cell protein and the next one is a tissue culture another method that we have used to increase the plants within a short period of time okay that is what is that means a tissue culture a traditional breeding techniques fail to keep pace with demand and to provide sufficiently fast and efficient systems for crop improvement so another technology called tissue culture got developed so by using this uh, traditional plant breeding plant breeding technique okay we are unable to meet the demands of a requirement of food by the ever increasing pop human population so that's why we are looking for a, an alternative breeding method by which we can uh, meet the demands of the demands for the food for this ever increasing human population so that is uh, quite achieved by using this tissue culture okay with the development in tissue culture okay we have quite achieved this uh, demand so what does uh, tissue culture mean okay when you observe this tissue culture tissue culture means uh, first of all when you observe how the tissue culture was developed means okay this tissue culture is mainly depend upon the totipotency okay this tissue culture is mainly depending upon the concept of a Totipotency. What is meant by totipotency means? Okay, the ability of a single cell to
to develop into a new organism. Okay, this phenomenon of a ability of a single cell to develop into a new organism. Such, okay, such a phenomenon we are calling it as a totipotency. Okay, who observed totipotency in plants means? The totipotency was first observed by G. Haverland. Okay, during the 1950s. Okay, during 1950s, a scientist called G. Haberland has identified the totipotency nature of the plant cells. And this gave, okay, pavement for a tissue culture. So, that means it was learned by scientists during 1950s that the old plants could be generated from explant. Explant means a portion of the plant which was taken out, from which we can able to develop the total plant or a new plant. Okay, from a small portion of the plant, okay, if we are able to generate a new plant or if we are able to produce a new plant, complete new plant, then that small portion that which we are extracted, that is called as explant. So, this phenomenon was observed in the year 1950s by the scientist. Okay, that is any part of the plant taken out and grown in a test tube under sterile conditions in special nutrient media. So that means, okay, whatever the, okay, for example, generally the plants generally where will go, will grow in the soil. Generally, the plants are grown in the soil. So whatever, the, okay, that means, okay, whatever the nutrient that are required for the plant to grow normally, okay, all, most of the nutrients are obtained from the soil. Okay, most of the nutrients are obtained from the soil. So instead of a soil, here we are providing the artificial medium. That means the medium which was created, uh, which was, the, which was uh, developed artificially, which consists of all the necessary nutrients that are required for the normal growth of the plant. That is required for the normal growth of the plant. Okay, and that is called as a nutrient medium. So by using such nutrient medium, okay, when you, okay, when we place this explants, Okay, in that, okay, or when the dex plants are transferred into that art, okay, artificial medium or nutrient medium, okay, the ex plant is able to grow into a new plant. Is able to grow into a new plant. That is so, but the all these process has to be done under sterile conditions. That means uncontaminated conditions. Under uncontaminated conditions. Then only, okay, we can able to get the required plant material. Okay, that is so. So, explants any part of the plant taken out and grown in a test tube under sterile conditions in special nutrient media. This capacity to generate a the whole plant from any cell or explant is called totipotency. So when you take an explant and you transfer to that into a medium under sterile conditions, then we'll get the new plant. Okay, this uh, ability of a single cell or explant to develop into a new plant, we are calling it as a totipotency. Okay, even Okay, in animals also we can find such phenomena. There are some cells, uh, while we are discussing about, uh, okay, re reproduction in organisms, while we are discussing about internal budding, internal budding in gemmules, okay, the gemmules are enclosing some specialized cells called archaeocytes. And these archaeocytes are having the totipotency nature. 
So when the conditions are favorable, these a group of archaeocytes will emerge out and they give rise to a new organism. So these archaeocytes are also totipotent cells. Like that here also. For example, in, a, in all the animals, we will find some stem cells. These stem cells are also totipotent cells. Okay, during embryonic stage, we will find these stem cells. Okay, these stem cells are also totipotent cells because these cells have the ability to develop into a new organism or any organ. Okay, that's why they are described as totipotent. So, in plants, okay, in okay, here we are discussing related to plants. So, any part of the plant, it may be the single cell or a, a part of the plant, okay, which has the ability to give rise to a new plant. We are we are calling it as totipotency. And next, you learn how to accomplish this in higher classes. So that means, uh, okay, that is how okay, what are the what are the cells we have to select? Okay, how we have to transfer into the medium and how we can able to get this new plant that, okay, when you go to higher classes, you will come across. Okay, when you observe here, generally we can select the meristematic cells. Meristematic cells, okay, meristematic cells, epical, okay, the cells that are present in the epical meristem or, okay, the cells that are present in a, okay, or parenchymate cells. Okay, these, okay, any living cell, any living cell that is present in the plant, we can take it out and that can, okay, has the ability to transform into a totipotent cell in case of plants. So, that how we can able to obtain this totipotency nature that we can, okay, you can get when you go to higher classes. Okay, that is, so it is, okay, so it is important to stress here that the nutrient medium must provide a carbon source such as sucrose. So that means uh, the whatever the nutrient medium that we are making use of to grow the plants from the explant. Okay, while you are selecting, while you are making use of nutrient medium, that nutrient medium should possess. Okay, that nutrient medium should possess. Okay, the source of carbon. Nitro, okay, so, okay, should have the source of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, okay, hydrogen, the different components. How they are obtained means, okay, we are providing the carbon source in the form of sucrose. That means uh, that nutrient medium comes of sucrose and some inorganic salts because some, they, okay, large number of mineral nutrients are required for the normal growth of the plant. No. So, how these mineral nutrients are provided means they are provided in the form of inorganic salt ammonium ammonium okay ammonium nitrate ammonium sulfate okay potassium nitrate okay like this some salts are provided which will uh, provide uh, different mineral nutrients and will add vitamins amino acids and growth regulators this is very very important Okay, growth regulator substances. Okay, growth regulator substances need to be provided. How this growth regulator substances? What are the different means? Like, okay, we have studied now auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins, depending upon the, okay, the structures that we need to develop based on that. We use different types of uh, plant growth regulator substance like oxygens and cytokines play an important role in the development of root and stem in the plant. So we use, uh, okay, we'll add these oxygens and cytokines also as supplements. So by application of these, met okay, of these methods, it is uh, possible to achieve propagation of large number of plants in very short duration. Because what is the material that we are making use of? Uh, single cell or a small tissue. So from one plant, we'll get a large number of cells, a large number of uh, small amount of tissues. So from one plant, we can get a huge number of plants and that too is in a short period of time. For example, if you want to obtain the new plants by using seeds, what we have to do, we have to raise the plant. 
we have to raise the plant it has to undergo flowering it has to undergo fertilization and later it is followed by the production of fruits and seeds and later the seeds need to be sown and we have to obtain the new generation then only we will get the new generation understand but uh, here without doing all this process and this long period of time because for growing one crop se one season and the next again we are getting then okay to obtain the seeds we are okay and how their seeds are functioning again we have to wait for another season so we are we okay we are making use of two seasons but by tissue culture no, such no need okay already the plant which is having the best qualities the desirable qualities are agronomic characters all the agronomic characters what the farmer is looking for okay those uh, plants will select and from that we'll extract the explant we'll take the explant and that is the place in the nutrient medium and we can obtain the new plants within a short period of time so and that too in a laboratory conditions within a small area in the laboratory in a small laboratory where light is available that is enough okay to produce this uh, huge number of plants okay that to a huge number of plants within a short period of time we can able to get by using this tissue culture method so that's what by application of these methods it is possible to achieve propagation of a large number of plants in with very short duration and this method of producing thousands of plants through tissue culture is called micro propagation because we are using either a single cell or a tissue a small amount of tissue or a group of cells we are making use to produce the new plant that's why okay this method of producing huge number of plants within a short period of time okay this uh, okay which we are calling as commonly tissue culture is also called as a micro propagation is also called as a micro propagation okay and next each of these plants will be genetically identical to the original plant from which they are grown that's that is they are soma clone okay that means as we are using the somatic cells okay we are not using the reproductive cells now we are not using the part okay reproductive structures here here we are using the vegetative parts of the plant as we are using the vegetative parts or we are extract okay we are taking the explant from vegetative part of the plant or somatic parts of the plant okay so we'll find there is no change in the characters and that too we are multiplying the cells or tissue to obtain the new plant by mitosis only so no segregation of character that is no differentiation in the characters we can observe we'll find whatever the characters that are present in the parent okay those are okay such characters only we will observe in the new plant that are generated by micro propagation or tissue culture that's why okay as okay now here also we can call it as clones because they are genetically and morph okay morphologically and genetically they are similar to that of parents the new plants which are produced as we are using the somatic parts of the plant or vegetative parts of the plant that's why we are calling it as a soma clone okay there is so each of these plants will be genetically identical to the original plant from which they were grown that means from which we have taken the explant okay the new plants will be genetically similar to that of uh, the parent plant from which we have taken the explant that's why they are called as soma clones okay and next many important food plants like tomato banana apple etc have been produced on commercial scale using this method so some commercial crops okay most of the commercial crop plants have been developed by using this uh, micro propagation or tissue culture 
okay that is uh, on a commercial scale and next uh, try to visit a tissue culture laboratory with your teacher to better understand and appreciate the process okay that means uh, nearby any agricultural okay any agricultural uh, college is there agb okay that is agricultural bsc college is there or agriculture engineering college is there okay you can uh, visit those uh, colleges uh, there they will regularly undergo certain prog okay this process okay to develop some new varieties and all that so we can understand uh, the procedure that they are following to obtain this uh, tissue culture or micro propagation okay and next uh, another important application of the method is the recovery of healthy plants from diseased plants so by using tissue culture by using tissue culture we can obtain healthy plants from diseased plants that means even if the plant is suffering from the disease or if the plant is affected with a certain virus or bacteria even we can get disease free plants by using tissue culture depending upon the explant that you have selected so based upon the explant that you okay that means uh, based upon the explant that you have selected based on that we can able to get a disease free plant how we can able to get means if you select the meristem meristem culture if you select the meristem okay as the explant why because okay even if the plant is a uh, infected with a certain virus or bacteria or virus virus or bacteria but the okay the meristematic cells will never get infected with the virus or bacteria why because the meristematic cells are always in a continuous cell division so usually they do not get infected this meristematic cells they will infect the other tissues that are present in the plant but never they will never infect uh, the meristematic cells so if you select the meristematic uh, tissue as explant which are disease free or virus free then we can get a disease free plants by using this tissue culture or micro propagation that is what he is saying so another important application of the method is the recovery of healthy plants from diseased plants even if the plant is infected with a virus the meristem that is apical and axillary apical okay apical or axillary okay is free of virus hence one can remove the meristem and grow in grow it in vitro to obtain virus free plants scientists have succeeded in culturing meristems of banana sugarcane potato etc that is called meristem culture because here we are using the meristematic cells as a explant okay the meristematic cells because the meristematic cells are obviously the totipotent cells why because okay the meristematic cells are continuous cell division and the newly formed cells continuously undergo differentiation to give rise to different types of tissues that are present in that plant okay parenchyma colenchyma sclerenchyma or xylem phloem whatever the tissue that is present they are all obtained from the newly formed cells of this meristem so obviously the meristem yeah, okay is con okay is considered as a totipotent cell is considered as a totipotent cell so okay we can able to get disease free plants okay disease free plants are virus free plants by using this uh, meristem or meristem culture okay the tissue culture which was developed by using meristem okay that is and next okay when you observe here scientists have been isolated single cells from plants and after okay digesting their cell walls or how able to isolate a naked protoplast 
okay generally when you observe the hybridization hybridization generally refers to sexual reproduction that means if you want to combine okay two plants okay the characters that are present in two different plants what is the technique that we follow means we'll follow hybridization in which we'll undergo sexual reproduction between two different varieties of plants so that uh, okay they will bring uh, both the characters of the plants into one plant that is called a cross hybridization or okay that is uh, but here we are undergoing somatic hybridization that means uh, okay we are undergoing uh, okay hybridization between two somatic cells generally two somatic cells will never fuse generally the two cells can form from one cell two cells can form by mitosis by mitosis we'll get two cells from one cell that is a division can occur but uh, never okay usually two somatic cells will not fuse under natural conditions okay two somatic cells will not fuse under natural condition but here we are making them to fuse and uh, we are supposed to break, okay develop uh, hybrids by fusing two somatic cells that's why we are calling it as a somatic hybridization for this purpose what we have to do means we all know very well the plant cells are covered by a cell wall first we have to dissolve the cell wall okay we have to dissolve the cell wall okay by using certain enzymes okay we all know very well the cell wall is made up of cellulose so by using an enzyme like cellulase we can digest the cell wall as a result the cell membranes are exposed these are called protoplast okay these protoplast of okay two different varieties of plant okay we'll select uh, one cell from one plant variety and another plant okay another plant cell from uh, another plant variety now what they are do we'll remove the cell walls we'll dissolve the cell walls and uh, the naked protoplast are obtained and now what we have to do means now these two protoplasts need to be fused okay these two protoplasts need to be fused how we can able to fuse this protoplast normally two cells will not fuse now so what we have to do okay we have to provide okay we have to make it to fuse okay how it is uh, made to fuse means for that purpose okay we'll add uh, we use a chemical called uh, peg polyethylene glycol that means the two protoplast are placed in a chemical called polyethylene glycol in the presence of this polyethylene glycol the two protoplast will fuse and the results in the formation of a single cell okay and results in the formation of a single cell and these okay now this is somatic hybrid that means the hybrid okay which is formed by the fusion of two somatic cells we are calling it as somatic hybrid and the process we are calling it as somatic hybridization now this single cell is now subjected to tissue culture or micro propagation from which we'll get a new plant and we'll check the characters of the characteristics of this okay this new plant and if it is useful we'll continue and we'll obtain huge number of plants for that okay if it is not successful we'll discard okay that is called a somatic hybridization that is what we can see here so scientists have been isolated single cells from plants 
and after digesting their cell walls, okay, have been able to isolate a naked protoplast surrounded by plasma membrane. Here, the protoplast means, okay, plant cells without cell wall, only the plasma membrane. Okay, that's why we are calling it as a protoplast. Isolated protoplast from two different varieties of plants, each having a desirable character, can be fused to get a hybrid protoplast. Now, these two somatic cells are supposed to be made to fuse. Okay, supposed to made to fuse. And uh, these, okay, which can be further grown to form a new plant. These hybrids are called somatic hybrid, while the process is called somatic hybridization. So, this new plant which is uh, produced. Okay, protoplast of two different plant varieties. We are calling it and the process we are calling it as somatic hybridization. Okay, imagine a situation when the protoplast of tomato is fused with that of potato and they will be grown to form a new hybrid plant something tomato potato characteristics. Okay. That is, uh, well, this has been uh, achieved, resulting in the formation of tomato. So, a tomato, okay, a, a cell from the tomato plant, it, okay, a cell from the potato plant was, uh, because both belong to the same family, that is Swanese. Potato and tomato both belong to the same family, that's why they are a little bit successful. Okay, so they have taken one cell from tomato plant, one cell from potato plant, they dissolved the cell wall of tomato plant, okay, tomato cell and a cell wall of a potato cell. Now they obtained the somatic, okay, the protoplast. And now these two protoplasts are uh, allowed to fuse. And a, a new hybrid is obtained called pomato. Okay, which has shown the characteristics of both uh, tomato and potato. So, well, okay, new hybrid plants combining tomato, okay, well, this plant did not have all the desired combination, sorry, well, this has been achieved resulting in the formation of tomato, I'll, I'll, okay, unfortunately, this plant did not have all the desired combination of characteristics for its uh, commercial utilization. Why? Because they produced uh, potatoes uh, with a hollow. This new hybrid, which we are calling it as tomato, okay, it produced the tomato, okay, okay, this potato-like structure with a hollow nature like that of tomato. In tomato, how the inner, uh, it will be free now, okay, like, uh, okay, juicy and a uh, cavity will be present. In the same manner, the potato-like structure has been developed, but uh, without, okay, that uh, internally, a cavity is developed, but such potatoes we are not, okay? Potato means it has to be solid and it has to provide more. Okay, more food material. But unfortunately, it was, uh, okay, that means the somatic hybridization process is successful, but the resultant product is not successful. Okay, the resultant product uh, that is or the resultant plant variety that is obtained as a result of somatic hybridization is not the desirable characteristics that what uh, the scientists or uh, farmers are looking for. That's why they have not, a, okay, this pomato which was developed as it is not uh, taken into consideration. Okay, that is about this uh, somatic uh, hybridization. Okay, that is about uh, strategies for enhancement in food production. Anybody is having any doubt?